what up and welcome back to a brand new episode of Creeps of the Crypt. We're doing season three now. We're on season three, episode one, titled Love to Death. I'm your host, John, and I'm here with my co-host. Other Alan. What's up, guys? Glad to be back on the third season. Yeah. Ah, man, we're, we're, getting, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're going to catch up to some of the... The good ones later on it's going by real quick but i want to say one extra thing uh this episode is brought to you by <laughs> ghost crusaders merch.com if you want to check out some cool t-shirts go to ghost crusaders merch.com also this isn't the full episode of the sh of the ep of the show so just make sure it's the podcast just want to make sure we're cleared up there yeah some of you guys you know you get a little bit upset uh so sorry you're not going to see the episode here you can find it somewhere but um, you could buy it. You know, you could buy it on Amazon. Maybe uh, yeah, maybe one day uh, if the demand's there, or if we just want to do it, do like a, a local thing where we actually have the, the episode playing while oh, we commentate no, no, over no. it. I'm not getting. Well, yeah, that would that might That'd work as fair use technically if you're doing commentary over. But you have to alter it enough that people aren't going to want to watch a, a terrible version of the episode. You know what I mean? That's true. It's a, it's a whole thing, guys. Because I know uh, you go through a lot of uh, fair fair use claims and a lot of you do you do your part to make sure it's it's good and up and up. But like other people, they just they just stare at the stare at the video and don't say anything. Yeah, no. Any, I, I, but, any creativity to and make people, it stand out on zone. And people were talking shit to me at one point when my when I so basically what I do I have a YouTube channel and I I do. Uh, reactions to movies sometimes and and uh tv shows that's how this whole thing started i was doing one for freddy's nightmares and i was like this is shit i was like you know it was a good show <laughs> tales from the crypt it was a half hour they did it the right way blah 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 blah. so um but i add a lot of stuff i had to change the you know i had to add filters onto it distort the video i add my commentary my 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 trying to be funny I add little clips that insert it to try to be funny, you know, so I do a lot. And somebody's like, well, maybe if you try to be funnier. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, whoa, shit. Well, I'll try harder. I mean, I don't know what else to do. You know, I'm trying my best here and I can't put up the episode. So that's why the episode's not there. Um, we haven't talked to each other in a while. And um, I just want to say, how is life? How's life been for you? Life's been good. It's um, you know since I moved in with my girl and her kids, it's been uh, it's been a little by little we're trying to renovate the place to make our own. I gotta look into uh, yeah. I don't know if you look these days, but yeah, the, the TVs are so hella cheap these days. Get mm -hmm. a good 4K for a good 200, 200 300 dollars, I guess depending what you're looking for. It's funny because um, I've had my TV for forever. I, I, this TV only goes up to 720. I'm, I'm using it as a spare monitor. Uh, for my little uh, mini PC, but uh, it's crazy how uh, how cheap they are these days. Yeah, so I'm have... looking to get in the new one soon. What's funny is I should have asked him for it because my uncle has he works at this job and he it's like uh, also has office buildings in there, and they they throw shit out all the time. And one day he came to the, to my house and he's like, "Hey," I'm like, "Hey, what's that?" And he's like, "It's for <laughs> you." And I was like, "What?" And I opened it. I don't even know how big it is. It's a big ass monitor for a computer. But I could use it as a television. So I have two TVs in my office. <laughs> I have my TV for my Xbox and everything for streaming, and then I have that TV for my cable. If I and I did do uh, fell out the truck. I did do a live reaction to um, The Walking Dead, but I the the, the ones who lived the, the the first episode. But I didn't watch from season fucking <laughs> six to the literally like I stopped watching season six of the original Walking Dead. So I was watching the new show with you know because they brought back Rick. Oh yeah. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm like, this is terrible. Uh, people liked it, so I'm like, okay, I can't watch the show. Um, <laughs> I'm way behind. I dipped out hella early. I think around the season uh, when three. They introduced you told the me governor. Yeah, yeah season there. three. So I I stopped at season seven. I think at the end of the all out war, I was like, fuck this because that was an all out war. But anyway. I'm glad that you and your girl and, your, and the kids are doing well because we t we just send memes to each other all day and we'll talk b briefly like shit. But like that's that's our that's a love language. Just sending yeah. freaking memes and uh, and uh, your the the clips that get taken down by Britney. Um, oh Spears yeah, right away. Right so, away. Some, uh, some <laughs> I love some her. steamy clips. I don't know. I love yeah. her. But this episode made me think about this girl 
as uh, oh? there was this girl, and I'm not going to talk about it because she's not going to listen to this, so I really don't care. So there was this girl I met one time, and uh, she's fucking gorgeous. She's absolutely gorgeous. And uh, mm-hmm. it was, we had like a kind of like a connection, so much so that like I would message her later on, and I'd say like, uh, I'd say something, like she post something in a comment or whatever. And then she goes, hey, you know, I was just thinking about you. She constantly said this to me all the time, right? <laughs> Every time I would she, hit her she was up thinking about you. and say something, she goes, you know, I still have the napkin from the night that we met from that, at that restaurant. Oh, uh, uh, man. It's like the I meme know. where, like, uh, you know, when the guy realizes that oh, the girl is flirting, but he needs yes. to do shit. <laughs> but the problem is this. Like, I was in not a good place at this time. It was physically and emotionally and mentally. I was not in the right place that I should be. So... Like For I was, sure. I think it can, I had something that was oppressing me because I do, I do paranormal investigate and I go to terrible places which I shouldn't. And the, those were like the beginning of my exp- of my paranormal investigating. You know, like it wasn't a nice place, although kind of one was. But the fir- very first one wasn't. It was a tree known for killing, supposedly that they would hang people on, and it was and they do uh, satanic rituals on on this tree in New Jersey, and. Uh, I swear to God, if I show you that video, I don't know if I ever showed you it. You probably saw it. I use this device called the uh, spirit box that scans the radio frequencies. And they say spirits could use the white noise to communicate. If you hear mm-hmm. the responses, that the ones that is clear, that because some you could tell is radio interference. But the ones that are clear is fucking evil. And it sounds like it's coming from fucking hell. And it's not edited. It's no bullshit. This was just a clip. The first time I ever got this thing, the second actually, I went to this place. My friend that does did it, did the things with me. He took me, and it was me, him, and this girl. And you could hear as clear as day. It says how many of us are kind of. It says like we didn't even know what to ask because I didn't know. You know, I was just a wanted a enthusiast. You know, but anyway. So this, so I was in a bad place when when this girl was saying this, and I was like, I was an alcoholic. I'm gonna be honest. I, I was, I gained so much weight. I, I was depressed, and I, I felt like it was an oppression. And so she kept, uh, and now, now I think about it, I was like, what the fuck? Who says that to somebody? I kept the napkin in my coat from the day I met you. Yeah, that's a pretty, so yeah, very important thing to yeah. mention. But. but not only that, she's too hot. She was, there was no, I'm, I, she's, <laughs> there, there was no way I could believe it, you know, because I'm like, there's no way. And my boy's like, oh, no, you never yeah, know. Yeah, it does sound like this episode or, uh, yes. or if you got, if you met, to, or if you met Tony Robbins, it could be a shallow hell situation. No, nah, m- maybe she's, yeah, maybe so I put a fucking spell on her. She thought I was yeah, fucking she sexy. Yeah, know, she might be 500 pounds or something. No, she, <laughs> she, she might think I'm skinny. She might put a fucking <laughs> hypnotize her. But anyway, yes, that's what this this episode made me remember her. And but honestly, mm. there was no fucking way. There, in my mind, and for until today, I'm like, nah. Even though she said things like that constantly, there was no fucking way that was, you know, there was no way. But I just thought about it because she's too. She was too. Be- she's really like a ten, like gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And now we don't talk at all. But <laughs> but it's been years. No, it's, and um, no point. it's very odd. Like uh, it, it, no matter how, like, I guess close you ever get to somebody uh, as friends, I don't think they'd go at, as far as saying that. So that definitely, uh, yeah, it's, it was had weird. some meaning behind it. Yeah. But anyway, I was I was like nah. But and the, you know, the worst part about it is that now I'm looking at her shit, and like we're so alike. In everything, except for mm. one thing. I'll tell you later. But, like, everything. Oh. Every fucking thing. I'm like, what the fuck? I might know. She's into this. She's into this. She's into this. She's into this. And I'm like, and she does th- she does these things. And I'm like, what the fuck is, like, how? How? Like, I guess we were supposed to meet, and maybe something was supposed to happen. But fat ass over here just didn't uh, proceed to... Uh, to do anything the right way, which he was supposed to. So that's another strikeout for me. But I don't know. I just think you meet people for a reason, and maybe there was a point, a reason for me to meet her, and maybe who knows. But I just see all these things. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Besides just this one thing, I think everything else is fucking crazy. For yes, sure. It's, it's, it's been, one of those things that, uh, it, yeah. It, you think about randomly and so yep. certain, I, I like how certain media that you watch something triggers a memory and your past but anyway this episode is called love to death 
and it was released on June 15th, 1991. It's exactly one year, almost a month before, but one year since the last episode, The Secret, ended. Um, it was uh, written by uh, Joseph Minion and John Mankiewicz, and it was directed by Tom Mankiewicz. Now, Tom and John are cousins, first cousins, and they have, no, no, yeah, they're cousins, and they have another cousin. And their other cousin is that asshole that used to be uh, the Young Turks, uh, Ben Mankiewicz, the guy who's uh, the critic, the movie critic for Turner Classic Movies. Uh, yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember I used to watch those uh, those video segments. They had, like, the he was doing movie reviews. But now, yeah, like you said, he's working at Turner Classics well, now, right? I don't know now. He did at one point. I think he also was, he at the movies, he did at the movies after one of the, Cisco yeah. and Ebert died. I know he was doing that, too. They were, like, the new one. They were trying it, and it wasn't working. But uh, yeah, it's Ben Mankiewicz. Right? He, uh, what the flicks was the show that they yeah, did on YouTube? His, yeah, his movie stuff was good. I, I don't know. I think his politics may not be on par with uh, <laughs> with mine. But yeah, his, the movie stuff was good. Yeah. No, his sometimes. Although he did look like an asshole. He was talking to Tarantino. He was like, "What do you say to people that uh, think Jackie Brown's your favorite movie?" And he goes, "I, I don't think those people <laughs> understand me or, or know my films at all." And then he was like, "Oh, I just ask because that's my favorite movie." <laughs> <laughs> Same brother. And I love, like, I oh, oh, good. Uh, well, uh, you know, Tarantino. Uh, anyway, uh, so they're they're cousins, and uh, Tom Mankiewicz is known for writing more than directing, technically, and he wrote uh, every. He's uncredited supposedly, but every single thing, it was with Richard Donner. That's how he got this because Donner's a, a producer in this, and everything he wrote was a Richard Donner thing. Like he's supposedly uncredited for Superman. Uh, the first one that Mario Puzo wrote, so he must have added dialogue or whatever. Then he did um, Superman to the Donner cut. It says he's he's cr un he's not credited as the writer for that either. But but um, they have him down as a creative consultant. Yeah, screenplay. Un yeah, uncredited, uncredited. He ha he's uh, he also this. I just heard about this movie today. Uh, Lady Hawk with fucking Michelle Pfeiffer, Matthew Broderick. And some other fuck that is known. He's known, and I'm, I don't know his name. Everybody knows him. Uh, um, Rutger okay. Hauer. Rutger Hauer. Yeah, from Blade Runner. Yes. So everyone knows him. And then uh, this guy Joseph Minions also the right. He's fantastic. I don't know what the fuck happened here. Because sorry, people. I know you hate when we <laughs> shit on an episode, but you got we got to be honest. You know, this is not a good episode. Oh, so spoiler. This is not a good episode in my opinion. Um, but the other writer, Joseph Minion, uh, he wrote. He's he still writes good stuff. He's fucking. No, he's not the good writer. My bad. Joseph Minion is not yeah, the good writer. Mankiewicz seems to have more credits yes. going on. Yes, Mankiewicz there. is yeah, the good Joseph writer. Minion. Yes, Mankiewicz did Bosch. He's House of Cards. He's the good writer. Minion is not that good because the only thing he does is movies with fucking uh, Artie Bucco from The Sopranos. It's like his friends or something. <laughs> he's did a movie called On the Run. And it's Michael Imperioli and uh, Artie Bucco, whatever the actor's name. I don't know the actor's name. Um, and uh, also uh, Drea or Drena, Drena De Niro. And I'm like, oh, this loser. She changed her name to be like Robert De Niro. And I look and go, no, that's Robert De Niro's daughter. I was like, what the fuck? Well, yeah, Drena De Niro. Actor yeah. John Vente, Vente Migla, Miglia. She's Artie, right? What? That was his name. I was looking at his name. Artie Bucco's I couldn't name? pronounce it. Artie Bucco's I actor, uh, John Ventimiglia. He's a Ventimiglia? No way. Yeah, I think that's, that's his last name. Mr. Oh, Ventimiglia. Is he related to the fucking guy from Heroes? The one that did, uh, who was who played, um, he played Rocky's son in um, Rocky Balboa? No. Says children. Oh, look maybe up. I don't think so. No, it doesn't say family. He's not in there. So, that, I think that guy's name is John Ventimiglia too. It's Milo Ventimiglia. Milo, yeah. Let me see if he's related. It doesn't say. Is he related to John Ventimiglia? No relation. No relation. That's crazy. Two actors with the same last name. But they only casted him because he has that bottom lip that curls like like a. Uh, fucking uh this guy anyway it uh <laughs> this episode also stars andrew mccarthy 
not the speaker, the former speaker of the house. This Andrew McCarthy is from the Rat Pack. He's been in films like Pretty in Pink, St. Elmo's Fire, Weekend at Bernie's, the classic. Um, oh, yeah. Mannequin, another classic. He was in the first one of that. And uh, he was a very popular actor at this time, at the late 80s, early 90s. And I was watching this, and I'm like, why is he not? I mean, he's okay. He's trying. He doesn't have much to work with. Because they right. made... Yeah. I, I, we'll talk about this in a second. Because I'm like, ah, this guy. And it also stars uh, Muriel Hemingway. Uh, and uh, she plays Miranda Singer. Andrew McCarthy plays Edward Foster. Muriel Hemingway is... We'll talk about this later. Anyway, why don't you give us a quick synopsis of what this episode's about, and then we could take a big giant dump on it. Yeah, the episode, uh, as you mentioned, Andrew McCarthy plays uh, Edward Foster. He's like a... I guess they have him down as a aspiring screenwriter. I don't know if he any of his shit got published, but yeah, he's a screenwriter and... He uh, has a big crush on uh, his neighbor named uh, Miranda Singer. So he's kind of had a had a few uh, run-ins with her, but it's just, he's just awkward and just like sees her as like, oh man, this is this is the oddest chick I've ever seen. And, you know, there's uh, a landlord that lives in that apartment that he's at that, you know, happens to offer him uh, a love potion. So uh, he takes it upon himself to, yeah, give her said potion. And then uh, kind of the, the plot kind of uh, begins from there. That's kind of like a little summary I have that I have for this one. Yes. You know what? I, when I first saw this, I thought I, I liked it a little uh, more originally the first time I saw it. I think this might have been one of the early ones I first started watching when we were talking about this show. Mm -hmm. And then going back to this, is like, oh, man, it wasn't as good as I remembered uh, it being. <laughs> no, no. Not the worst episode, but yeah, we'll get to yeah, the, it's not, see, the stuff we had issues with. I'll tell you why. Because we're already going to get into it now. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Uh, sorry, people. You could tell we were trying to like talk about you know shit before because this 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 is really not great. So um, I will tell you why. This because uh, till death came out the season before, and that was actually better. And it's the same fucking premise. That's kind of why. And I'm trying to wonder why did they go with yeah. this episode? The comic, funny enough, that which is also fun. I was reading. I was looking at the comic. The comic that this is in is also the one that Judy, uh, what is it, Judy, You're Not Yourself Today, or whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the same comic book. So that, that this Love to Death has that, that's the first, like, I think that's the first page of this comic is Judy, You're Not Yourself, or whatever. And then it, later on, you, you'll see this one. Now, the comic for this is short and much better. And I'm like, and while I was reading the comic, something just clicked in my head. And I said, I've seen this before. Because I think it was the drawing, the way the people were drawn, or the main character in the comic book, who's also Edward, and she is not Muriel, she, um, not Miranda. Name She's Margaret, not Miranda. Her Margaret, name is Margaret in the, yeah. the comic. Yeah. So something with the, maybe the way they were talking to in the comic is funny, because why you look so glum, chum? You know, <laughs> like, like I love the 50s <laughs> talking. But one day where I was reading it, all of a sudden it clicked in my head, I go... There was a Twilight Zone episode like this. And I go, there was a Twilight Zone episode where the guy goes to a guy and he gives him, he goes, it was the dollar. He says, I'll sell you this potion for a dollar. And I said, this is a Twilight Zone episode. And I went and I looked it up and it is a Twilight Zone episode. This Twilight Zone mm -hmm. episode was released in 19, I don't know what year. I didn't even look up the year for the Twilight Zone episode, actually. Um, but it's season one, episode 31, called The Chaser. And it's the same fucking premise, exactly, except the ending is different. So it's a guy who's madly in love with a girl. Actually, it connects with the comic much more because somebody gives him a card to go to a house. And he goes to a house, and then it's like it's weird because he opens the door to the front of the building. It's a building. And then it's like a black, like, you know, like when they did the intro for Twilight Zone, where you see the door and it's in space. Right, that's what it looks like. It's just a black hallway and another door, but it's like it's not done. It's like a you know, like a like a like a screen that you could tell, like you know, that they projected the door onto the thing. It was it's pretty interesting the way they did it. And then when he goes in, then it's just the room with the looks like a library, but there's all these books and things and items. And he buy he 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 says, I don't know. This guy gave me this card, and he didn't tell me why. Whatever. Gives him the love potion. He goes to the girl that he loves, and it's like the comic. She's like trying to close the door on him. She was. She's. She ignores his calls and everything. 
And then he's like, oh, please, just have one drink or whatever. Just, it's exactly this. It's exactly this. Mm -hmm. So then I waited to the end. I said, maybe this is based on the EC Comics, right? Because this came out, Twilight Zone's uh, early uh, it, 60s. It must be. I'm, I'm seeing the comparisons to this because uh, I'm looking it up. The, yeah, the, the story, the comic or issue came from, came out in 51. 51. So, the, but, the Twilight episode you mentioned came out in 1960. But the Twilight Zone episode is based on a book by some by it's, it's, as I, I asked Grok on Twitter that's what I go to now every time I have a question I go to Grok <laughs> so I because I, I go uh, the episode I said the episode the chaser from season one episode three of the Twilight Zone says it was based on a story by some person because I, I didn't get I forgot the name I said who's the person and when was the when was the story published and he says the episode the chaser from season one episode 31 of the twilight zone is based on a short story by john collier the story also titled the chaser was published in 1940 as part of collier's short story collection fancies and both Goodnights. of these took it took it from this short story Sto story like, yeah um, yeah yeah it's crazy yeah i thought it was the other way around no, so it goes to show a lot of how much some of the stuff that it gets put out there is inspired, and then later gets you know put into something else. Plagiarized. I mean, <laughs> did, did, yeah. Sorry. I mean, it's not that much variation besides a few things, but uh, essentially the same, <clears throat> the same you know uh, motivation and outcome at, at the end. But you got to think of we'll this. We'll get to it later. Back when you think of this, back in the day. This is first off, Rod Sterling. A lot of every episode is taken from an author from a short story or something. And almost all of it. If if he didn't write him himself and he had other people write him, they would always most of the ideas were based on somebody else's work prior, because that's all they did back then was read, right? They they just created mm. this medium, you know, and to to make stories and present stories. But pr prior to that, people had to read. <laughs> so that's not any different than what we get with movies nowadays because yeah. you know uh, we talked about it uh off the off to the side but you know a lot of you know what tarantino you know, is yeah. inspired by is from other movies so in in some ways they're they were a little bit too close to you know what what he ended up adapting so it's kind of like that same philosophy still goes on to this day i mean even look we take the example of the batman i mean that that's taking from comics as well and changed up just enough for it to kind of be on its own but they take the good parts from the comics and mm -hmm. and then uh you know as i they don't make it the like the main focal point but it's like a part of it and it's a setup so yeah. it's not much different yeah so, so it's at least um i don't know i think to some extent that yeah, that could work but i think there has to be a little bit more creativity to make it stand out a little bit more because it's very close so uh, pretty much plagiarism at least with this example of the the comic uh yeah and then uh, Twilight Zone. Yeah, it, but they stole that idea. Like uh, Al Feldstein. I mean, he had. To, I mean, then again, he could, he could just revert back to his memory of reading that story. You know what I mean? So he just says, "Oh, I remember," and he does it. But it's almost exactly the same, except the ending. And we'll talk about that later. So yeah, Al Feldstein in 1951 wrote this uh, comic strip. Uh, which is much better than this episode. Uh, this episode they adapted from this comic, and the episode is also, you know, based on the Twilight Zone episode, which was originally based off a book. So you got this big fucking thing going on here. I also, surprisingly enough, listen to this one. So the director of this, Tom Mankiewicz, I think it's him. He directed a movie. Did he do that one? Let me see if he directed it. I'm not sure he directed it. Yes, he did. Okay, so he directed Delirious. Uh, I have not seen Delirious, but for some reason I said, I think I saw it. I clicked it. It's not highly rated at all. It's with John Candy. And it's this idea for this kind of, there's elements of this episode in that, in that fucking movie, which is as a writer. It's about a screenwriter, which because Tom, uh, Tom Mankiewicz was a screenwriter that we talked about already. So it's about a screenwriter who writes a show and... Well, something happens. He gets hits on the he hit on the head, and when he wakes up, he's in the. Sh it's like Pleasantville. <laughs> he's well, oddly enough, you know, when you talk about uh, the mo this delirious movie, I mean the 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 girl in this episode is in that movie too. Yes, that's what he worked because he directed that one. So I think they and mm -hmm. that one he had to have that was in ninety one. Also, this came out in ninety one. So he had to work with her on that first because movies take longer, and then he probably he probably casted her for this. 
And I don't know if he had like crush on her, they were dating or, you know, or what, you know, because no offense to the actress, but I don't see why Andrew McCarthy would be going crazy over her. And I'm not really not being offensive <laughs> yeah. to her at all, but she was kind of like a, I don't know. She's a good actress. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah, but they were trying to present her in the 80s like a sex symbol, in, in my opinion, and especially in this episode. But, like, I don't see her like that, especially when Andrew McCarthy was, like, he had the mannequin Kim Cattrall. <laughs> you know, like, he had her. He was after Molly Ringwald. So, like, yeah, so he's in... The, Ali Sheedy was in the one in Outstanding the Most Fire that he had a crush on, too, which she was actually pretty... Besides of The Breakfast Club, they made her look terrible. She was actually a pretty actress. So, um... So, like, I don't believe him falling in love with her. That's a, a problem. But they were trying to make her, like, a sex symbol. Maybe she was considered very sexy in the 80s. But in today's standard, no. I think she's a good actress, in a sense. But anyway, so, yeah, the show... The show he's a writer in this in this uh, episode. Andrew McCarthy plays Edward Foster, right? So he's a screenwriter, mm -hmm. and he it opens up with, uh, like, this fantasy world where it's, uh, she's the homemaker, she's home, and she's cooking, she's so loving that he comes home, and he's like, honey, hi, dear, it's like, supposed to be like the 1950s, but it doesn't even, I don't know, they, they lose, the, there's a lot of stuff missing from this episode. And then she's like a horny bitch after, she like rips off her clothes, and then she throws him on top of the table, and she takes off his pants, and she goes, oh, he's, it's like he's speaking to me, is that what she, <laughs> I was one of the, I think intentionally funny lines so yeah. this episode. So I'm, I give it, it's a plus one so far. <laughs> so far. Yeah. <laughs> so he says, she says that. And, and then he wakes up and he goes, oh no, because he's writing, he's a writer. So he was writing a script. That he So his thing in this episode was they're trying to do something different because maybe they know that the Twilight Zone episode is basically the, the comic ripped off the Twilight or the book. We don't really like they, they They knew that they had to do something different. And they couldn't be the same. But at the same sense, why don't you pick a different story? Yeah, at that point, I might as well just pick another story. Or I don't know how um, bound they were because it feels like sometimes these stories that from the comics have potential if you tweak mm -hmm. it and change certain things. But um, it, it almost seems like, at least with this example and maybe others, others prior, I have to remember some of them because I know... I mean, this pretty this is pretty spot on with the, with the story of the comics. Just a few things are changed and... Um, I would say 90% close to the comic, but like we'll talk about later that the, the ending on the comic's a little bit better, or at least leading up to it. Yeah, it's better executed. But see, uh, it just seems like they, they stick too close to the, the story, but they don't really uh, add to it to make it a little bit better. See, I feel different. I feel like they do add to make it different, and it didn't work. By the way... Uh, or more she, so, it, yeah, I guess that's how I would feel about it as well i wouldn't be surprised if okay she does get topless in this maybe that's why he didn't get her topless <laughs> maybe the director's like i want to see those those tats i could have yeah, asked her but i got her in that like the old school andre yeah yes it got her these this sexy skimpy but she looks awkward in just, it because she's so big she's a big woman she, she's a tall lady you know very, very broad shoulders broad just shoulders not, and almost yeah it's just just doesn't suit her figure yeah so then uh, he's constantly daydreaming about this woman that lives in his building. He just moved into this building, and he's just, like, fascinated with her. Um, he his sink, this uh, problem with his, his faucet. So he goes to his the landlord or the super of the building, because it's the landlord who lives in the building, and uh, he asks who has a camera on the outside, because this was something in the 80s, too. The late 80s and 90s was always about surveillance. And, like, there's a movie with Sharon Stone and... Uh, Billy Baldwin, is it? And it's like some fucking... He's, Billy Baldwin's a fucking perv. <laughs> <laughs> he's got cameras inside every apartment in his building, in their bathrooms and in their rooms that he's watching. He just watches everybody in the hotel and he falls infatuated with her. And he's, like, obsessed with her. And then, you know, she finds out he's a psychopath. Well, supposedly, I thought the movie was good. I saw it on HBO or Cinemax when I was a kid. But Sharon Stone recently came out and said that that the producer, Robert Evans, who produced The Godfather and uh, Love Story, that he was ahead of Paramount at one point, 
that he told her, Sharon Stone, listen, why don't you fuck him? Because he's a terrible actor. <laughs> and maybe you guys will have some chemistry. Yeah, on the screen if you fuck him. And she's like, what? Like, why do I have to fuck him? Like, why can't we get a better actor? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh I mean, yeah, shit! I was like, oh god, that's horrible. You know, just, just make it a porno. Yeah, then she's like, I think uh, because she said no to fucking him off screen, oh, that that she kind of got blackballed a little bit. I'm like, I don't know. I think you did casino. If that was before or after, I don't know. So, is that, if, there's no way she did that. That movie with Billy Baldwin after Casino. There's no possible fucking way because she just worked with Scorsese. I think she won the Oscar for that fucking film. So I don't think she. Uh, I think it had to be before. Billy Baldwin never was uh, that that big a deal, was he? Because I don't, I don't, I couldn't name you a, a lot, a handful of his films. I've seen him in some things, but most of them were trash. Billy, he's the one that was in. Was he the one? Yeah, Backdraft. That's the biggest one he was in. Backdraft. He kind of does suck. I mean, <laughs> I was like, I think, I think yeah. I'm like, yeah, that movie was like, good. Everybody else was good. He <laughs> I was remember like, the older Baldwin brother. I played uh, Freddie on the. On the Flintstones movie, uh, yeah, the, his his performance is more memorable than anything I've seen Billy Billy Baldwin in. Uh, the movie, um, what's that other movie he was in? The, the, bio, he's in Biodome, the other one, right? That's the the other Baldwin. Yeah, Biodome. Yeah, the other Baldwin brother. Um, and then the other one's a murderer. Escaping me. Oh name? yeah, that's Alec. true. <laughs> Alec over here. I think yeah, he should know better. He was in that freaking oh, movie, uh, The Shadow. He was shooting guns. Yeah, the for, not only the shadow. He was he's been in Hollywood forever. There's no fucking way. Anyway, this guy sees her again in the building. Let's go back to the story. And uh, <laughs> she's getting naked. So at this step, I feel like the director just wanted to see her naked. I think that he probably had a crush on her or something in the last movie. It's just a sh such a shame that we couldn't get this guy to direct that Terry Hatcher episode. Yes, he would have exactly. figured out scenarios he, to get her naked. Yeah, he got it. He worked it out. This I don't know, maybe Terry Hatcher, I, I really think that Fred Decker's like fucked that up somehow. Maybe he got drunk or something and came on to her and she was like, um, this is not going to happen. But I don't know, because the, the, this director, he got it done. And I don't think anybody, it, it was unnecessary. <laughs> like, this is well, the uh, thing. <laughs> this is the thing with this episode. Amanda Plummer is like the peak uh, nudity. They, they were able to get an actress to, to, yeah, to give us. Yeah, so far. That's what it seems like. Well, you know... Um, this is the problem with this episode. So then he goes after he sees her. She does she see him? No, she doesn't see him then when she takes off her clothes. Not, not when she's like um, in, in the laundromat downstairs and he was just creeping on her. Uh, and then all of a yeah, then later on like he just randomly is looking through a mail mail. So I understand yeah, why she yes, got yes. pissed. So this is the thing. <laughs> this is what. So then he goes tells the, the super or whatever. He goes, "There's a beautiful lady that lives in this building," and he tells her her name. Another fucking creep. So then uh, Louis Miranda. So then he starts. Uh, he goes home, he's working on his script, and he changes the in, all the names of the main female character in his script to Miranda, to her name. So then he knocks on her door. Oh, she yeah. doesn't know who the fuck he is because she doesn't, she doesn't know this fucking guy, right? She's an actress. So it just so happens it all clicks for him. He's thinking, I'm a writer, she's an actress. And then he goes to her house to talk to her, to I guess pitch the script to her. And then she thinks he's fucking coming here to pick up uh, some boxes or something. Like a messenger or something, yes. she said. So that he goes, and who does this? Who goes in through somebody's mail? <laughs> like, you go to their house. Yeah, right in front of her. She's on the phone with yeah. that old-ass long antenna coming out of that phone. Uh, yeah. And <laughs> That's the portable phone. She really uh, puts that put that effort to, to slam that thing closed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was so weird. Like, at that point, I don't know why she would want anything to do with him. She just... He's like, who the hell are you? He's just looking through I know. <laughs> her mail casually like they've known each other for years. Yeah, exactly. I was like, Can I help you? Obviously, this guy he's playing, uh, Andrew Broderick, I mean Andrew Broderick, Andrew McCarthy, the character he's playing is autistic before they knew what the fuck it was because <laughs> he's just oh, yeah, for doing sure. shit that's so awkward all the time. So he does this. Uh, really, I don't I was like, what? That's the thing. And it's not like a, they, in a charming way. Exactly. Either. They make him unlikable. And that's... That, that's the whole point with this story, with the comic book, the Twilight Zone episode, and probably the original story. The guy was just in love with her. He was in mm -hmm. love with her, and she wanted nothing to do with him. 
You understand? Right. Like there was not like he was wasn't pretty, a creep. He played it straight. He wasn't yes. like silly or creepy. It was just some regular dude. Like, just ah, a regular this, guy this who's just in love. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this guy is a creep. Everything about him. And, and then he goes home after she throws him out. She then she apologizes for throwing him out, which I don't know why the fuck she did that. And then she said, "Why don't you come yeah. by for drinks later?" I mean, this guy's a fucking weirdo. Going through my mail, I'm gonna call the police. And listen, this fuck came in here pretending to be a messenger. Then he's going through my mail. I'll tell the landlord. Get this. Make this. Get this fucker out. Of here, I don't want this person anywhere near me. Then he's then he starts seeing. And also sending mixed signals. Yeah, yeah it's so yeah. weird. Then he starts seeing the poster he has of some fucking movie. A wonderful, I don't know if it was a wonderful life or what it is. He sees her picture. Then he starts seeing his picture, and he's him and her together. This guy's a weirdo. He's fucking weird. So that's another thing they they just they made him very unlikable in this episode, and that and that's hard to do, especially when you cast somebody like Andrew McCarthy. Who's a li- that's the whole gimmick of him was being the likable guy. He was the likable. Yeah, that seems like what he was trying to do. But like the way they wrote it and just what the scenarios that put him in it, it just did the opposite. Like uh, he didn't feel bad for him at all when she just came back uh, after, and she just completely forgot that he told her. Yeah, she, she told might. him this, and yeah. he had some dude that she was going up at the bank. Yeah, go in there, and he had like he's just standing there like an idiot with, the, with flowers. Yeah, and he's supposed to feel bad for him, but why do you feel bad for him? Because he's a weirdo dreaming all these things and thinking all these things. And I guess they're trying to say, no, he's in love with her. Bro, there's a way to do it without being this fucking creepy. They did it in the other episodes. The Twilight Zone, they I just, guess... Yeah, they just, mis- they just mismanaged that. I, I get what they were trying to do and at the, first, and then rewatching again is all shit. <laughs> I don't know, I miss these weird instances yeah. and super autistic uh, actions he took. In the Twilight Zone episode, he's calling her, and so he called her five times, but they only showed her one time, and then the people are waiting in line. They go, this guy's been trying to call, he's, this is the fifth time he's been on the phone, but he keeps calling somebody. And then they give him the number, he says, no, I gotta call her because she, she's in love with me. So he seems like a desperate loser. This guy seems like a fucking creepy bastard. That's what he comes off as, because it's not. They don't make oh, it. Yeah, it the, gets worse. It gets yeah. worse later. Yeah. They don't okay. make it in the comic. Yes, it gets. It's the worst part. See, they don't make it in the comic and in the in the Twilight Zone episode that it's sexual. It's love. You know what I mean? It's a love thing. It's yeah. like butterflies, like mm-hmm. teenage puppy love things, where you just like a girl, you think she's cute, and you want to be with her and kiss her. That's in in this. He's like he has these ideas that is cute. Oh, they're together. She's the wife. He's the homie. And then I'm gonna fuck you and throw you in the bed. I look like a dominatrix, you know? Like, so he's just a fucking perv. So then she apologizes mm, yeah, to him. Much. She sees him. She's like, oh. I'm sorry, you were waiting for me, and I brought this big dick Mandingo guy to come over and have sex with me, and I totally <laughs> forgot because you're a loser nobody. But then the best part is he pitches her the idea finally because he goes, listen, you're from the same town I am, or, or, you know, same, or same state. Um, I'm a writer. You're an actress. I think you'd be perfect for the part. I changed the character's name to your name, right? Like Miranda's her name. And he's like, she's like, oh. right? She goes, is that this part? Is that... Is that uh, no, that yes, it has to be. And then she goes, you'd be perfect for it. She goes, you like me, don't you? <laughs> he goes, yes, very much Yeah, so. pretty much. And she just pretty much tell him, like, Get yeah, lost. I mean, I don't want yeah. nothing to do with you because yeah. you, you, know, you can't benefit my career. Like, she just kind of, like, uh, seems like she's just bang her, trying to bang her way up to the top and to she, get auditions. She told him, she goes, uh... You might be somebody, Which, uh, right? As you said, you might you <laughs> might become somebody, and then I'll look after you. But most likely, you won't. Right. Like, like, it's just like, yeah, the way she said it, it's like, yeah, I'm not even. It, it, it's yeah, it's uh, messed up to say, but I don't blame could... her. Just given everything that we just saw, yeah. So I didn't feel bad for it. But yeah. then it got really weird because she was on the phone, and he sometimes goes through those uh, instances where he's just staring off into space, and you see her. Uh, you see her with like the wig on like earlier the way that he's fantasizing about her so just creeps up behind her while she's on the phone and then we get like this scene is like like she's into as oh and he starts wrapping his hands around her her waist uh and then it's oh everything else like you said it leads to sex and then and then it's back to reality and she's like what the fuck you doing here it just punches him right in the face yeah and, then and she as, throws it, as she should have she should have called the cops and then she throws him out, and uh, the stuntman hits his head on the <laughs> fire, oh, uh, fire extinguisher. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, she's like, "Get out!" Then, then, so then she becomes a nasty ass, like she is in the in the store in Twilight Zone, and in the comic, she becomes a nasty ass then, because she tries. She's not being such, like she's trying to be nice. She's not a total bitch the entire time. 
he's a creepo the entire time. He's got these delusions that he's with her, and mm -hmm. all these things happen where the other guy, he already knows the girl wants nothing to do with him. You know, in the comics, she slams the door. She tells him, get out. She goes, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm busy every night. I don't want to be with you. Like, get away. And then he's like, damn, why won't she give me a chance in the comic? In the show, too. No, in the show, he calls her. She keeps hanging up on him. Similar, instead of being at the house, right? So they make it work here. Here, he, he, there's all these instances where he just comes off like a creep. He's also peeping on her or she changes her shirt. He's just, it's just awful. They did a terrible job. I don't know how this writer does write so many great things wrote this and, not, and I guess maybe that was the idea maybe they wanted to make him like this because this way they thought it'd be better if shit turns you know shit hits the fan at the end of the twist you know what I mean like he deserves it but some, uh, but yeah I can see that I mean we it's been a running theme for some of these episodes where yeah it's usually the you know the morally bad character on that usually gets their comeuppance at the end so yeah. I guess maybe that's what they're intending but it just didn't come off that way the first time uh, I'd watched it. I think it does but yeah, I think it kind of does it, come off like that, but the problem is is the problem is it, you don't always have like with this type of story, you didn't have like we could have gotten he could have got cuz he look giving her the potion to make her fall in love with him because she he she doesn't like him. She wants nothing to do with him. By doing that, that automatically makes him the bad person. You understand? Like, that's already... Like, you yeah. don't need to add all this other shit to make him a creep fuck. Like, you didn't have to do that. So anyway, he he go, uh, he's depressed. She threw him out. The super lets him in when he's going to pay the rent. And then, you know, it tells him, like, yeah, you want to be... This fucking creepy Russian is sitting in a room with cameras behind him, just like Alec... Uh, whatever Baldwin, Billy Baldwin is in the movie Silver. And he goes, hey, uh, I'll Man, give you I gotta this. watch it now. Well, he, yeah, he, he, he does this. That was a big scene, too, when I was a kid. There's a scene where he's watching the cameras, and you see one girl and a guy having sex in one of the cameras. And I was like, oh, my God! <laughs> I, remember, <laughs> I remember being so excited for that. Although the whole movie, I think, is like sex. Because that's all Sharon Stone really did back then. That was their basic instinct. But So the super, or whatever, the landlord gives him this this liquid potion. But there's, there's another part, too. Does, uh, does he charge him? I forget if he charges him. I don't think he not in this him. episode. Uh, yeah. In the comic, uh, he, the guy offers it the that, um, that, that for like a dollar. Yeah, for a dollar. And then in the Twilight Zone episode, it's the same thing. That's I remember I told you the dollar. That's when I was like, oh shit. Then when he goes back in the Twilight Zone episode for the antidote, like he does in the in the uh, comic, it's a lot more. And in the comic they don't say how much it was. I think he says your whole life savings in the comic. I think he says your all your savings. And he goes, what? But you charged me a dollar or something. And he's like, yeah, that's because I knew you were going to take it no matter what. But you, everyone has to come back for the antidote, you know? So, and, and both of them, and it's the same thing. It was going to kill her. And the comic is, is, is in the Twilight Zone, it's the same thing. It was to kill her, uh, the antidote. So, but he goes, he just gives him the fucking the potion to fucking make her madly in love with him. And she becomes a sex hound, sex fiend, which is a little better, I will say, from the Twilight Zone episode and the comic. And, well, the comic does show a little bit. I was um, rereading the comic. Uh, he was offering it for $1,000 the next oh, time he came by to, to get the antidote. Yeah. This Sorry. one's the difference that between this one and the, the show. It's just, he never it's offered like, an antidote. Offer anything. And, and, and in the, I think in the Twilight Zone, it's his life savings uh, when he goes for the antidote, which is a, it's, it's, a, you know, it's not a potion in the Twilight Zone. It's a glove or something, a cleaner. Rabbits? I don't know what the fuck it is. I forgot. It's some shit in the, in the thing. Anyway, so he goes to apologize for being creepy, and then she's she's kind of funny in that scene. She's just like really like get away, but she does it in such a good way. It's kind of comedic, you know. Like, oh uh, uh, yeah, she says something like, uh, "I think uh, it'll be I'll forgive your apology. I guess when you move out of the building or something." Yeah, and then he's like, "Oh please, that's like a yeah. line." And then he, uh, is he when he wants to open it, he goes, "I, I need to open her, right?" And she goes, "Anything to make you leave faster." <laughs> and then. He, he pours the fucking thing in. She comes back, and then he sees this one more. Oh, she, he goes. To, how about a toast? And she just downs it. Like, get out, get out. You're creep. <laughs> yeah, get one out. shot. <laughs> and then he's just staring. He goes. She goes. Why don't you leave now? And pretend you drank yours. <laughs> She's like, <laughs> yeah, I don't good. know. After all, after he assaulted her basically, because she's on the phone, and then he goes and he like, you know, he hugged her and everything. Why would she even let him in? You know. 
He's just yeah, one that step part too far. wouldn't make sense. I, don't, I think after that, the uh, yeah, they, they want nothing to do with that guy or even uh, offer to get come back in again. So that that was a little yeah. Then she gets a little the, sus, but you know, it was all there to first set up to what we get what we get later on. Yeah, but then she gets the call on her phone and she walks away from him again in her house. What the fuck? Well, she <laughs> uh, she goes to call the cops. Oh the yes, that's of, she like, goes to call the, she the cops. Call, She's yes. like. Yeah, he won't get out, and then you look, you look like you see the formula kick in. Yeah. He can't get out of his, his clothes. <laughs> yeah, the cops would have showed up. Everything, oh, everything's fine. Because what she, it is fucking creepy because, yes. yeah, she's just she's just turned, and it's like, oh, yeah, let's fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you start making out. <laughs> yeah. He gets his eyes glow up like a kid on Christmas. Yeah. It's like, oh, shit, it worked. And then it just lunges at her, making out. Yeah. Poor, and she uh, just and rips it, her clothes like, I'm hot. And poor Andrew yeah, McCarthy. Yeah, she's got this lingerie, lingerie that just doesn't doesn't suit her. She's no, too tall. She's too tall. She's too. Got my chips. Yeah. And then uh, Andrew McCarthy at this time, and then I'm, they didn't. Well, I guess Hollywood didn't give a shit. His uh, he he was an alcoholic at this time, so uh, I'm. You could kind of see it. I don't know if you, if you you could see in his complexion, his skin tone. You could see it's he's in California and he's. I know he's a pale person to begin with, but he looks he's still pale. He looks like she's pale, and she looks healthier than him. You know what I mean? Yeah, I can see that. He's got those. Uh, <laughs> I drink a bottle a night. Got yeah, kind of eyes. <laughs> and he looks kind of. I forgot what scene it was. Maybe before he threw, like his eyes kind of cross, and it's not known for having cross eyes. <laughs> and like, oh, he must be drunk on scene. I think when he was waiting he with must the have flowers. Got, yeah, he must have gotten drunk just to do the scene. Maybe. I don't know. I don't think so. she's she could look very yeah, this, attractive this, at times. I will say. She's got the angry. It's the eyebrows for me. Yes, it's, it's the eyebrows. Angry eyebrows. She's got. She's, but, she's got that resting bitch face. But but she there's times when she does look attractive. Like when she wakes up with the wig. No, but like uh, no. When she wakes up in bed after supposedly having sex, she looks very attractive there when she's on top of him. And then, uh, but then they, you know, they have sex and then he's realizing, oh no, this potion really made her love me, love me, because she won't get the fuck out. And she won't leave me alone. Like, I want to write, now I want to be alone, which is like the comic. It goes from, I love you. And then later he's like, could you get off me? <laughs> the, next, the next page in the comics, like, get off me. Like, like, like don't you have anything right. to do? And the comic, and she goes, I have nothing to do, but you know, but be with you. Could that be you with Brittany with that potion? Ah, uh, no, I I kill myself right away too, actually, because she's already crazy, and I know if I was to fucking give her a love potion and have her be like the way she is, and the way she talks now, you hear her voice now, it's all fucked up. They ruined this fucking girl. Good lord. Yeah, but I love her. And she'd be chasing down, chasing down her. with the knives. I just want one night with her. That's all I want. Was one, it was one night with Britney Spears. But anyway, yeah. Uh, the, uh, he's trying to write. She won't let him. She goes under the table, gives him head. And he's like, oh. All right. And then nice. later she's like, uh, he doesn't feel well. And she's trying to have sex with him again. He's like, I'm all fucked out. <laughs> <laughs> and then she goes, she rips her clothes off. And she's wearing the, the fucking sexy dominatrix shit again. She goes, do I look all fucked out? And he's like, oh. oh. So that was what was okay. supposed to be. A funny part. It I'm was gonna funny. train you. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. That part was funny. For some reason, he's wearing a it trench was. coat in his bed. <laughs> I don't know what. Yeah, that's I don't know about. why. Uh, Spectre gadget over here. I have no idea. Yeah, I have no idea why he's doing that. But and by the way, I feel bad. Andrew McCarthy was such a big deal. I don't know what happened. And you know, breaking at Bernie's was a hit. And you know, it was stupid and ridiculous as it is, especially to have the part two, <laughs> where it doesn't decay or anything. It was those were hit movies like. I don't know. I don't know what happened to his career. Maybe this ruined it. I don't think it was this, but it'd be funny if it was. So I did that fucking episode of the Crypt, and my whole career went down the toilet. It must have been like it was just. Yeah, I haven't seen much else listed here that. Yeah, you think you'd have a something else going on besides the, this few things that he had. Oh yeah, the, it, she just lunches at him after uh, after he gets up. You know, he's saying he's all fucked out. And yeah, that she, neighbor lady he met early on, she's like listening and listening on them. Is like, oh, she's like getting turned on. She's, she's like, from, oh yeah, uh, somebody, somebody's getting some on this floor. She's from Growing Pains and the show The Willies. She's in a bunch of shit. That old lady, and then uh, she's, she's hearing. She's like, oh, I just she's wearing the same outfit. I thought when I was a kid and even till today, I was like, I thought she was like gonna try to go in there and get some because I'm like, why is she wearing the outfit that he was dreaming that she was in the beginning of the episode? You know. 
in that in that house a house homemaker outfit. You know, she was baking in the oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's doing the same thing. I'm like, what the fuck's going on here? And then, uh, yeah, so he tries to run away to the bathroom. She's she's just on top of him. And then he punches her, smacks her across the face, and then she likes it. And it's like, oh no! He's like, oh my god! So then he runs to the super. He's like, help me, help me! And he goes, there's no cure, right, or whatever. And he's like, and he looks around. He goes, all those women are dead, aren't they? And he goes, yeah, basically they are. Uh, you want the fucking you want that? That's the only way out. You know, you got a killer. Don't worry, it's not traceable and everything. And he's like, oh, okay. See, the difference between this and the Twilight Zone episode, I think the Twilight Zone episode was going to kill her. The same thing. And he's like, but no, don't you have like a potion that'll make her love a dog more than like the give, like, oh, is that the comic? Well, yeah, the comic says that. Like, don't well, you? Well, the comic, have, yeah, yeah, he just pretty much offers it at the end of it as being a, some sort of poison. And then, um, yeah, they, yeah, he just knows that they're they're gonna end up eating it because they go crazy. And the comic is one thousand, yeah. And he goes, uh, "Well, I think I don't know which one it was, but one of them says, well, 'Well, can't you just give her like make her love a dog?' I think it's the, the Twilight Zone. Make her love like a dog, uh, like a little bit, like a, a, to make her not love me so much. Give her something else to love, like equal it out, you know. But Pretty I don't know true. if he, if this guy makes him pay or anything either. But then he just gives him the potion again, like that's the only way out. So that kind of fucking sucks." And, uh, and it the, was weird that the way they did that, and I still don't understand what the intention, what the guy, what the guy's about. Like, what he gets he, out of this? The, yeah, what's he get out of this? Like, all these women getting killed, and having all the photos, I guess, apparently of all the other women that I think he just jerks off to it. And I guess so. But he's not like it's, it makes him seem like this sinister being that lives in this complex. But nothing more than that. We don't really get a any kind of backstory on that. Yeah. Any, it just didn't make sense. It's just like a one of those additions, like you said, they tried to do that. It just it just didn't work. work. It didn't should work. have just kept it yeah. a little bit more closer to the comic or done something more. I think they didn't want to. They didn't want to get labeled as play, as copying the Twilight Zone because it's uh, the, but the, but it's all intertwined with each other. So there's you know what I mean, like. Like, you, you can't, they're all related to that John Collier thing, so you don't want to give him credit, so you go through all these hoops and hurdles to not seem like you're copying the Twilight Zone episode, where if somebody read the comic, they see that the Twilight Zone episode's like the comic, Twilight Zone episode came after, you know what I mean? Like, it's all there. Like, there's nothing, you can't avoid it. You can't avoid it. So they try to do yeah. it different. Even at the end here, in the comic, they, she, he puts it in tea, the thing to kill her. In the Twilight Zone episode, he puts it in champagne. So it's the same and thing this here. One too, the, uh, yeah. Champagne, yeah. Yeah. So he puts it in champagne here, and in the Twilight, in the Twilight Zone episode, this is the difference because they couldn't do death. Maybe they could have. I don't know. Maybe they didn't want to. But he's about to give it to her. To give the champagne, and he doesn't drink it either. Supposedly he just dies naturally. Supposedly seemed that way, or just I don't know, pe- pe- fainted, because she goes, uh, she goes, she tells him something, and she goes, basically she's pregnant. In the Twilight Zone episode, she shows him a little booty that she made. And then he was like, oh, fuck. And he drops the glasses and the champagne. <laughs> and then he's like, I couldn't have gone through with it anyway. There's no way I would have gone through with it. And then she goes, we're going to have another one. And then she's just like, he's like, passes out. And then you see, like, the guy, the alchemist or the spiritual guy that gave him the potion behind him fucking fade away as he blows a smoke ring. Up. That's a heart. That seemed more interesting for sure than what we got out of this. Yeah, he just the same same outcome. He she swapped drinks with him because his glass looked dirty and he wanted she wanted to give him the clean one and pretty much gets I guess dies from some sort of poison and see him like yeah, transition into like looks like he's in heaven, you know, there's the stars yeah. up above and like the clouds and everybody in white robes. So it seems like oh he's he's free now. I get to get away from her, but and then later you see, uh, yeah, the girl come back and she ended up saying that she jumped out the window. She got because she couldn't live without him. Oh, that. Oh, yeah, so that happened. She's in heaven with with him too, and it's, her face is all fucked up. Yeah, she jumped out the window basically. Like he realized yeah, that it he just ends sc- with him screaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it freeze frame screaming. And the best part of this episode all together is yeah. the crypt keepers. That crypt, kind of sucked. The crypt keepers final line in it, where he he's in bed with the fucking bag of bones and. Uh, 
He goes, was well, it good enough for you? Right? And then her head falls off. And he goes, what do you say? <laughs> you fell head over heels? Right? <laughs> it's something like that. I was like, yeah, Kicker with a cigarette. Oh, that was a good, one of the good ones. Yeah, the he goes. Outros for the, the show. Was it good for you too? And her head falls off. Oh, talk, talk about, about head, head over, over heels. heels. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be able to do that laugh too. But yeah, that was the best part of the episode because the episode is really not good. If I was to rate it, I gave it a 1.5 out of 5. And I think that's being... And maybe... Uh, I don't know. It's crazy because I liked this a little bit more when the first time I saw it. But I just... I, I think I was partially not paying attention at the same time. But I missed these these instances where it's like, yeah, this guy was a creep. How are we supposed to like this guy? And yeah. The way that things... The way that they went about adding this addition to the landlord in the storyline of the comic now, knowing... What did comic, Silver come uh, out? It's just like it just didn't really add anything to it besides just uh, some creepy guy, sinister guy is going to give you something. When did the movie Silver come out? Because I think it was like 93 or something. I was Oh, wow. That's All right. So then Wait, wait, wait. Silver. 93, yeah. It... Wow. You looked it up as soon as I told you about all the fucking that's happening in that movie. <laughs> Yeah, it got me interested, so I had uh, to find out <laughs> more about this movie. Because I, I hadn't heard of it before. And uh, Oh, yeah, it was a big yeah, deal. Yeah, I like, I like some of the stuff Sharon Stone's in. I, yeah, Casino, Total Recall. Yeah. And then the famous Cat one, Woman. yeah, she's spread yeah. her legs. That's basic Newman instinct. There. Basic instinct. The Newman about the bust. Uh, you know, you type in silver and it doesn't even show up on IMDb. <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's so obscure. Yeah, it's like a different silver. It's, yeah. And then I get Silver Surfer. It's like, what, is, what are these other silver movies? It's not even on Rotten Tomatoes. I, I couldn't find it. This is this is a this was terrible. But there's a lot of sex in this fucking thing. That's what she was known for. Was all this sex? Yeah, she was. She oh, was she hot is, it was back before. Then, so she uh, definitely get it. Yeah, it was before. Um, it was right after Basic Instinct. So she was going to be typecast as this sexy actress that only does sex things. Or whatever. Anyway, and then our, and then our penises got soft when uh, she cut her hair short and it was in that terrible Catwoman movie. So I was like, oh, well, she was I, like, older I was, than. As I was jerking off to this, no, she was older <laughs> than. She was beautiful. For Total Recall. She was gorgeous. I think in the um, yeah, and the the Quick and the Dead. She was in that with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio. But she, she you know, obviously I, they were two different characters. Where a bunch of people were in that. But I think she was still attractive there too. Uh, no, I mean, look whatever she's a she's not a she's a good actress the catwoman movie sucks that's because it just sucks it's a terrible it was just terrible but she's a, she's a good actress i so will give her that i'm not gonna take that away especially in casino she's a fucking bitch in that movie and she's a she's fantastic but um Great. yeah i give this a 1.5 i think uh i think that's a i'm trying to see if that's fair or not because i don't i don't i think andrew mccarthy was trying even if he was drunk, he was trying, and she wasn't terrible. <laughs> you know, she was acting the way she was. You know what I mean? Like I, I feel like I'm giving the actors like uh, a bad, like they, they, they're not the problem here. It's the same thing no, it's with the script. Uh, it's, it's the yeah, script it's, that's the could have been better. And it's surprising because the one of the writers is a good writer. Like he he's written on a bunch of stuff. Yeah, this, this could have gone. This could have gone through. Uh, a rewrite for sure. I, I don't. I don't know how they just let it go through. I guess they just maybe were pressed for time. Who knows? But I think they could have written something a little bit better, and not necessarily have to have these weird instances of him, him just pretty much being a creep. Uh, it's no way, no ifs, ands, and buts about it. I mean, it's pretty. It's pretty straight on. What you know, those moments were just did not did not make you like the character at all, and it just didn't make sense to. <clears throat> to what the uh, original comic at least was about at least the guy wasn't didn't seem like a creep it was just like yeah this this girl won't, won't date me i don't know why and yeah, uh, yeah i'd say yeah i'd say it's a uh, i originally came in get, thinking i was going to give it a, a three but i was oh, like wow. thinking about it now and just watching it no. i think yeah it's, i think a solid uh i think a solid two it's yeah two and a half i would say the actors uh do what they can with they what they got i think the big issue with this is just that th these additions they added to this to the short story uh and just didn't really lead anywhere and just kind of and this the scenarios to put in the edward in it just didn't didn't make sense this is what i'll say i i, I think if you would have look there's only two ways to do it and i think the way the, the i think the twilight zone episode is the reason why they didn't do it 
the way the comic was because it, the, it the, if you watch the Twilight Zone episode after this, you, you're gonna go like, it's exactly like the comic except the ending. Everything's the same. Every fucking thing's the same than the, as the comic. So if they were to do that, they would be like, they, people would think they're ripping off the Twilight Zone. Not knowing. So they had to try to make it as different as possible. And they added things like he was working on Delirious, a movie about a guy who's a screenwriter who fucking, you know what I mean? Like uh, the guy gets hit on the head bec- and he, and this guy is the same thing. He's living, he, he, his fantasies are his scripts, are his, you know what I mean? Like he's looking at her and then he envisions her as the character in his movie. He's looking at the poster and then he, they're turning into the characters from his movie. He's, like, he's constantly building, the episode starts with his script and uh, the, the whole scene and then he wakes up while he's writing he's like no no you know so he every time he fantasizes about her she turns into the girl from his movie and he goes and he hugs her so they he took elements from the other movie delirious that she was in and they try to incorporate it here to change it make him a screenwriter make him see things like that he's in love with her like this and do all this stuff and turning him into a not likable character because he comes off as a creepy bastard that's constantly fantasizing about her when it can't just be what they do in the Twilight Zone, but it's done char it's done with charm. You know, it's done it's mm-hmm. the same way in the comic, it's done with charm. The, the conversation he has with the random person, oh, why are you so glum, chum? And he goes, Oh, if she just there's a word he says, he goes, uh I am. I'm nuts here. about a girl, but she won't give me a tumble. <laughs> 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 and he goes, ah, oh, oh, is that, uh, is that it? Well, go see this guy. He'll fix you up, guaranteed, huh? What can he do? An alchemist? Say, I thought those guys went out of the with the Middle Ages. Oh well, I can't lose anything. I'll go see him. See, what's interesting too about the way I read it when I see his character in the fucking. That's also that brought me to the Twilight Zone. I see his face, the way he's drawn, and I go to this actor, and I was trying to find out who it was, who was also in a Twilight Zone episode. He was also in the movie 12 Angry Men. His name is John Fieldler. John Fieldler. He has this unique voice. If you hear his, he's an old 60s actor. If you hear his voice, I'm like, that's who they should have cast in that episode of Twilight Zone. He would have been perfect because he seems like, I guess that's why they cast Andrew McCarthy because he was the likable guy in, I mean, every fucking thing he was in. <laughs> you know, like he was the the crush, the good guy, the good rich kid. He wasn't the uh, who's James Spader. He wasn't James Spader, the asshole rich kid that thought Molly Ringwald was just a slut because she's fucking from the wrong side of the tracks. He was the good guy that liked her because he actually liked her. Anyway, Jesus. So uh, yeah, this episode directed by somebody who's. Uh, not a great director. Not, I mean, uh, he didn't do that many good things. But uh, this writer, John Mankiewicz, wrote a bunch of good stuff. And I'm pretty sure they just, they wanted to deviate from, uh, yeah, that's what I think it came down to. They wanted to deviate from the, the source material enough so they wouldn't be compared to the Twilight Zone episode. That's probably what it is. And then so they said, okay, but then why choose this? There's so many other stories you could choose from. Yeah, I'm really curious what the what led him to this decision to write it out this way and and um, yeah, covering the story as well. Like if if they were gonna handicap themselves, eh, yeah, I would I would have preferred them pick a different story then. Maybe the writers' room was just a bunch of people that wanted to write something and they're nobodies because most of these people we see that like this Joe Minion doesn't have much anything good besides working with. Uh, Sopranos actors in Newark, so maybe they were like, "Oh, let's give him, so, let's give these people something to write," and they write, they wrote based on some of these comics, and then they said, "Okay, this is the story we have," and like they, they read, oh, th- wasn't this a Twilight Zone episode? I don't know, it's a, it's in the comic. Oh, I have seen this, you know what I mean? Like, and then like oh, we got to change it, so they gave it to John Mankiewicz, and they said, "Listen, I'm working on this other film called Delirious. It's about this will make him a writer, and then make him dream shit." Oh, okay. And then they just changed and did it real fast. I don't know. I'm trying to, to come up with something. Because you know, the other part also, why do this? is because, why, Like, why would you be the director, go out of your way to do this, when they did this similar story in season two, and it was great. Till Death was great. Yeah, which is uh, weird how it, it's kind of similar to this. Like, I didn't like it at first, and then ended up liking it more than when we watched it and talked about it. So, 
interesting um, how those uh, contrasts like that happen. And uh, yeah, I, I just wish that they rather just. I was curious to know what the what brought them to this decision. Yeah, they, they could have just picked a different story. I don't know. It makes me wonder if um, a lot of the. I'm sure some of them were planned, but I wonder like if it's just one of those things where uh, people want to be a part of the show, so they send in their their pitches to and then pick a story from the EC Comics vault and and there you go. This is probably one of those throwaway mm-hmm. episodes that they just you know give gave these gave them to to do and say yeah we'll just add it to there we'll do this one. So I'm very curious because I feel like yeah they could have done something else. There's a lot of, I've read I've been reading a lot of those comics you sent me so there've been there's been a lot of other ones that I was like oh they should have made an episode That's about this. Is, that would have yeah. been interesting to to see yeah. almost like a House of Wax kind of story. Uh, that I read in one of the the issues, and um, yeah, they could have just done that. That would have been more interesting. But yeah, funny enough, the next episode we're going to talk about is called "Carry On Death," uh, with Kyle McLaughlin, your favorite. He loves Kyle McLaughlin. Big fan of his. His uh, work with Twin Peaks and uh, some David Lynch projects. All David Lynch. I, 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 it's been a while since I watched Dune, but uh, I know that's can became more relevant now with the new one coming out and. And uh, Blue Velvet, I recommend that one. That was that's a good collab. Yeah, good actor. Well, we'll, to, we'll get into it. I don't want to, but share my thoughts on that one too too soon. There's a radio. I could change my mind about it. Yeah, there's a radio episode of Tales from the Crypt, also called Carry On Death. Now I don't know if it's the same one. You know what I mean? But it, there's a radio episode called Carry On Death. I don't know if it's uh, based on the comic that there already was an episode. So we'll find out. So uh, we will see you then next time. Um, you can follow us at Creeps of Crypt on X. You can follow Splinter or Alan at Splinter47 on X. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's what it is. Yes. And uh, you can follow me at Ghost Crusader TV on X. And you can check out GhostCrusadersMerch.com, the proud sponsor of this podcast, the only sponsor of this podcast, <laughs> where you can get cool shirts that help uh, both of us maybe get cameras. We'll get, well, get Alan a camera for his uh, computer or maybe help Alan get a computer because I think he has this little tiny thing he's using. But it works. Hey, a little, little mini PC. Yep. Yeah, but it works. But, um, yeah, that's it. It works. That's all for this episode. Yeah. I mean, there was fun stuff to find. The more, the best thing about this episode was all the backstory, all the backstory stuff. That was was good. It, it really was good. I, I like talking about it and, and, and getting into it because uh, it was a lot more interesting in the episode. Yeah. But I like it. I, I, it's not the worst for sure. I like, don't no. get us wrong. It's just I think there's things that could have improved upon the original comic because we've encountered a, a lot more recent that the original story was a lot better. At uh, the end of it all, what they adapted it. And the end of it all, if there was no till death. Then uh, this one, wait, wait, what's this one called? <laughs> Love to death. Oh. So <laughs> that this death. one would have been higher, but till death was there, and it was corny at times, but it was good, and they did the story already. It's like if they were to do a fucking episode of a, a serial killer Santa Claus again, and be like, what they did this, you know, like. What the fuck Ooh, are you true, doing? Yeah. So yeah, that's all. It's but, getting into that same realm where where some of the episodes end with like the guy that got killed. It, turns into a zombie so we, we got a few, oh, yeah. a few of those too yeah. so we got kinda, another, it, could, it could have become that i think we have two african episodes this uh i mean african episodes like <laughs> like what well, we think new Orleans. i think like uh no because they're in a different country so i think till death was like a different country with like voodoo and i would think we have two of those that's what i mean when i say that i think we have two one with Whoopi goldberg and then one with james remar unless it's the same episode but uh yeah and, and I think they're both like the love potion shit. So I don't, <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see when we get to like that. Like Margaret said, it's uh, very ethnic. Yes. Was that her name? Mar- yes, Margaret. Yeah, the, this one was named Margaret. Yeah, Margaret. Oh, they changed her name. So, they changed her name so in the ethnic. comic. It was Margaret. So they changed the name to Miranda here. But in the fucking till death, her name was Margaret. Margaret. <laughs> All these connections. Anyway, yeah, that's it for us this week. We'll see you in two weeks to talk about Carry On Death. We will talk to you guys next time. Peace.